In this video, I will give you an introduction to this week's challenge, Urban Growth, and will shortly address how this challenge is related to the different themes and videos of this week. Urban Growth is a challenging topic, as it has negative but also positive aspects with challenging and appealing urbanized environment as a result. When we take an astronaut's view to the world by night, like for instance here looking to the northwestern part of Europe, you can see clearly the illuminated, polycentric and interconnected patterns of urbanization in this part of our world. According to the United Nations, the world population is expected to increase from 7 billion to, to over 9.3 billion by 2050. This is a 40% increase in less than 40 years. At the same time, the number of urban dwellers is expected to rise from 3.6 to 6.3 billion. To look at this trend in another way, the global urban population is increasing by 60 to 70 million people, or the entire population of countries like, for instance, France or the United Kingdom, every single month. Or, to put it differently again, every day at least 200,000 people move to cities or are born in them, equivalent to populating a city the size of Amsterdam every four days. If you look at the ranking with the largest urban areas in the world, you, you can see in the top 20 that almost all of them are situated in developing countries. Actually, 95% of urban growth will be in these developing countries. While this also includes that an expected 3 billion people will live by 2050 in informal or so-called non-planned urban settlements. So it is a misunderstanding that urbanization mainly results in high-rise, dense and new urban environments. In fact, megacities of over 10 million inhabitants only count for approximately 8% of urbanization. At the same time, the largest share still concerns mid-sized to large cities, urban sprawl and rural areas. As you can see in the pie chart here shown to the right. In the pie on the left, you can see that Asia still includes the largest share of urbanized areas of half a million inhabitants or more. It is, however, important to be aware that the continent of Africa is the fastest urbanizing at this moment. One of the negative impacts of this worldwide urbanization process is that it leads to an increased pressure on natural areas. Cities have a strong dependency on their hinterlands and therefore put significant claims on land use, necessary to supply essential needs of urban dwellers such as food, water, energy and the management of its waste. Humans have come to so thoroughly dominate Earth's biological and natural systems that some scientists have gone so far as to claim that after the Pleistocene and Holocene, we have now entered an entirely new geological epoch called the Anthropocene, or the Age of Man. In fact, cities of the 21st century wield so much power that it can be concluded that there often isn't anymore a leading national economy, but that there is a network of metropolitan economies where countries' talent, creativity and industry are concentrated. This has led some experts to envisage a future of powerful city-states rather than nation-states that drive the world economy. Within this context, this week's challenge of urban growth and transformation will be addressed from the different themes defined. The first theme that will be reflected upon is that of the effects of urbanization to the shape and structure of cities. Key concepts like monocentric and polycentric metropolitan regions will be explained, but also what different approaches or concepts to urban shape and structure exist. Like that of the compact city, as shown here, for instance, in the design of the great city, a new town, Ego City, near Chengdu in China. Regarding such concepts of the compact city, you will learn that urban shape, surfaces and infrastructures are highly integrated and connected, often leading to multi-layered and complex environments. But regarding this theme, you will also learn about other concepts that take a different approach. Like, for instance, the well-known example of Mazdar City, a new town eco-city in the United Arab Emirates. 
Similar to the previous example, it also can be considered an approach based on the compact city concept, with integrated solutions. The difference, however, lies in another urban morphology, or built-up open space ratio, often indicated by the so-called FSI and GSI. Notions that will be explained in detail within this theme of shape and structure as well this week. The result in case of Mazdar City is that its main shape and structure can be considered as a compact though low-rise built-up environment with a maximized roof surface to create room for solar panels and other surfaces. Surfaces necessary to achieve the ambition to become the first zero carbon city in the world. And this relates directly to the second theme of focus in relation to this week's challenge, the urban surfaces and infrastructures. This involves energy infrastructure, sewerage and drinking water infrastructure, together often framed as sanitation infrastructure. But it also involves transportation, to which particular attention will be given, as this is a crucial aspect of urban environments and growth or transformation. As you can see, in the extreme case of Mazdar City, transportation can become highly innovative, with self-driving cars and separated, non-accessible streets. For the time being, however, the largest part of challenges will concern existing urban environments, and only to a limited extent new towns like Mazdar City. The challenges related to transport in existing urban environments concern space conflicts, and often are related to livability. Sensing and real-time feedback, together with strategic planning, are powerful tools. In fact, the pain is in the change, not in the outcome. In the images shown here, we see an overview regarding the city of Amsterdam, where the effects of measures to improve accessibility and livability by reducing car use and increase more sustainable alternatives, like for instance bicycle use, are monitored and shown. Also, the connection of these urban services and infrastructures with new mobility concepts and energy generation provides new opportunities. Like shown here, in the concept to use electrical vehicles, so-called EVs, for a temporary storage of electricity, generated with renewables on top of buildings. One step, step further, either, is the integration of these services into new concepts of infrastructures and buildings, like shown here, the Dutch example of a solar bike road, which generates electricity. When we zoom out, it shows us that at the scale of the city, such connection of supply and demand provides all kinds of insights and potential solutions to improve cities' sustainability. By considering and matching essential flows like energy, water, nutrients and waste, the so-called urban metabolism can be determined and improved. This urban metabolism is an important notion that also will be explained more in detail within this week's theme of urban services and infrastructures. And this on its turn connects directly to the third theme we will address in relation to the challenge of urbanization, which is the natural resources. Due to urban growth, globally rising middle class and new developments like ICT, with respect to the natural resources, the role of cities is often challenging mm -hmm. due to their larger environmental impact and socio-economic change. But it also includes significant potentials for solutions, as cities, for instance, generate the largest share of global GDP, while being more effective in energy use. In this week's video, on the theme of natural resources, the relation between resource use efficiency, self-sufficiency and urban density will be explained. The fourth theme addressed concerns that of livability and urban living. Regarding the social versus the physical environment will be explained. But also places and communities will be addressed and to understand that a neighborhood is not a community per se while aspects of the street level design and community building are key to livable urban environments, or even conditional to their sustainability. Livability is also strongly related to the notion of equity. As you can see in this world map, in particular developing urban regions in the world 
also concern the places where the average income still is to be considered low or medium level. This combination of urban growth and poverty puts huge pressure on existing urban environments and eventually could even lead to urban decline or unlivable environments. But even in existing and positively developing urban environments, such urban growth puts serious pressure on their built-up areas. Like shown here, for instance, for the case of London. There are limits to the available space and also limits to systems of transport, like shown here for the example in Amsterdam, which makes new smart concepts or innovations or innovative policies and governance necessary to find these solutions. And this is the last theme addressed this week in relation to urban growth, the theme of policy and governance. In fact, from a policy or governance perspective, it is better to speak of urban transformation instead of growth, as there will be limits to growth. And regarding this theme and how to adjust policies, strategies based on dynamic control and development, qualitative planning of conditions, transformation and strategic interventions will be key in the transformation towards urban environments and structures that include change and are livable, sustainable and just, and simply exciting environments to live in. <laughs>